Hello, Volkswagen. Hello, Volkswagen. Hello, VW. Hello. Hello, car. Hello, Audi. Hello, Volkswagen. Hello, Volkswagen. What the f 45 years ago, the VW Golf was born. And over that time, it's constantly been refined, improved, and enhanced. Decades of learning distilled down into this, the Mark 7 Golf, arguably the finest hatchback we've ever seen. But it's 2019, time waits for no man. And now we have a brand new Golf, the Mark 8. And for this, the new eighth generation Golf, VW are promising big things. They're saying this new Golf will revolutionize the compact vehicle category. Looking at these cars from the outside, revolution is probably the last word I'd use to describe the new Golf. I mean, it looks like a Golf, but there are a couple of new additions. First and foremost, you get new LED headlights, plus a set of strange, interesting, I'll go with strange, claws along the lower section, plus newer, more aggressive bonnet creases. Around the side, it's still very much recognizable as a Golf, but you do get new wheel designs, a new character line that now runs the full length of the car, a new C-pillar, plus around the back, a new set of rear lamps and a set of delightful and fake new exhausts. Lovely. It's an evolution, definitely, but revolution, not so sure. It's exactly the same size as before. It has the same shoulder room, the same leg room, the same headroom. It even has the same 380 litre boot space. Although in fact, it actually has slightly less storage space when you fold the seats down, about 30 litres less in fact. Nothing revolutionary here then, but there are big developments to be found on the inside. This is where they've been hiding all of the changes. They've completely revamped the interior on the new Golf 8. The previous generation Golf, by comparison, was quite simple. Lots of physical buttons, a straightforward design, but here they've gone for a much more futuristic feel. This is called the digital cockpit and it's now standard across all versions of the Golf. The old analog gauges from the previous car completely gone. And in their place, you now have a digital readout of your speed, your revs, and all of your driving data. Over here, on the same visual axis, you now have a choice of new infotainment systems. You can have a smaller, lower res 8 inch screen, or as is the case right here, a bigger, higher resolution 10 inch screen. A little word of warning though, this whole interface takes quite a lot of getting used to, partly because it's more sophisticated, but also because the way you interact with it is completely different to before. Even doing things as simple as changing the volume or adjusting the temperature is now completely different to before. In the old car, you just use the knob. You turned it, bosh, off you go. Here, you have to use touch pads. Watch this, to change the temperature, I have to swipe my finger across this capacitive touchscreen thing. And to actually change the temperature of my seat, I have to use two fingers, tap that again and again and again. The same goes for simple things like turning the lights on or off. There's another touch pad for that. You can dim the interior lights by tapping them and then tapping them again and holding until the light reaches the right brightness. It all sounds really, really cool and I'm really into my tech, but I just wonder if it's a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. Even something as simple as changing the volume. Watch this, I have to swipe my finger across this, but it's just not very responsive. Look, nothing's happening right now. And I'm sure that over time they might refine the system and get it to work more effectively. But in the back of my mind, I just can't help thinking, What's wrong with a knob? It's all a bit tricky. And if you're a technophobe, then you might struggle to get your head around the tapping and the swiping and the prodding and the waving. But if you're afraid of tech, don't worry. VW has a solution and it involves even more tech. There are a couple of really cool voice assistant features in the new Golf. First of all, there's Alexa. So if you've got the 10-inch infotainment display, then you can use Alexa to do things like find points of interest, get news updates, or find opening times for restaurants, etc. On top of that, you can also control your smart home technology. So you can turn the lights on at home, turn your heating on, all before you pull up to your driveway. On top of that, you also get the new Hello Volkswagen voice assistant. Warm my hands. Okay, warming hands at the front left. 
How amazing is that? I mean, it doesn't always work, sure, but when it does work, very cool. The new Golf will be available at launch in four trim levels. There's the standard Golf, followed by Life, Style and R-Line, with each trim getting more equipment than the last. Ignore the basic Golf spec if you can, as that comes with a smaller infotainment screen, one zone aircon and 15 inch steel rims. The pick of the bunch, depending on your budget, is probably the Style model, which gets 17 inch wheels, sports seats at the front, a leather steering wheel, LED lights and three zone temperature control. If you can afford it, well then get the R-Line, which comes with all the extras. Well, almost. Regardless of whichever spec you go for, you can now enable certain features retrospectively. So adaptive cruise control, wireless app connect, Wi-Fi hotspot and more can be added after you buy the car. Of course, with all that tech, you might be forgiven for thinking this is more of a gadget than a Golf. But at some point, you're gonna have to drive the thing. And luckily, for the most part, it does still feel like a Golf. Crucially, they've done quite a good job in here. The overall ambience is reasonably nice, although it's not necessarily as premium feeling as you might expect. They've done a couple of good things. First of all, well, the dashboard has some nice squidgy material, which is what motoring journalists tend to gravitate towards whenever they're assessing quality, tick. But the rest of it is actually a little bit plasticky. For example, there's plastic all along this lower section of the dashboard, plastic on the center console, plastic on the doors, it's not bad, it's just not necessarily as nice as, say, a BMW 1 Series. Having said that, these seats are really nice. They're soft, they're supportive, and the cabin is actually really quiet. So on the whole, you get the impression that you're driving around in quite a premium vehicle. As for the way it drives, well, don't expect massive changes. It's based on the same platform as the old Golf. The steering feels light but precise. The suspension soaks up bumps really nicely. There's some body roll, but the car feels really settled. And while there's not a tremendous amount of feedback through the steering to tell you when you're running out of grip, there's a lot of grip, so you really don't have to worry about it. That being said, it's not all perfect. I would say that by default, the steering and the ride are a little bit on the soft side, but you can firm things up by pressing this button on the center console and choosing between comfort, sport, and individual. Comfort, too soft. Sport, probably too harsh but in individual, you can actually cycle between 15 different settings for your suspension. Although weirdly, you can only choose between two different settings for your steering, both of which are probably still a little bit too light. As for engines, there's a pretty decent choice. There are two three-cylinder petrols with either 90 or 110 horsepower and two diesels with either 115 or 150 horsepower. The new petrols use a new Miller combustion cycle for lower emissions and better fuel economy but VW also gives you the option of five different hybrids, three mild hybrid ETSI engines and two plug-in hybrids. I'm in the 1.5 litre petrol right now with a manual gearbox and this doesn't come with a mild hybrid technology, but having said that, it's still a decent combination. There's decent amounts of power and while you're not gonna scare yourself silly, I mean, it's not that kind of car, you're still not gonna be thinking that it's a pathetic engine. Economy-wise, I've been doing a mixture of B-roads and motorways, and right now I'm reporting around 40 miles per gallon, which is pretty decent for this kind of engine. Now, Volkswagen haven't yet confirmed exactly what the MPG figures are for this car, but they are saying that it'll be 15% more efficient than the previous generation. Of course, your own mileage will vary depending on which engine you go for and how you drive it. But if you get tired of driving, you can just kick back and let the new Golf take the strain. There are loads of really useful driver aids in this car. It has a system called IQ Drive, which basically allows the Golf to drive by itself. As long as the cameras can see the lane markings ahead of you, it can basically accelerate, brake and steer by itself. Now we've seen that kind of thing before, but what we haven't seen before is Car 2X. Now Car 2X is really big in theory, at least. What it does is it essentially allows the Golf to talk to other cars and infrastructure over Wi-Fi. So picture the scene, right? You're driving along a motorway, you're doing 70 miles an hour, and you're approaching a load of cars that have come to a standstill. But because you're using IQ Drive and you haven't paid attention to what's going on around you, you don't know that you're about to have an accident. With Car 2X, the stationary cars can actually send a message back to your car to warn you to slow down, or even tell the car to slow down by itself, thereby preventing an accident. Now that's all really good in theory, 
But the reality of the situation is that so far, almost no cars have this system. So while new Golfs can talk to each other, Golfs can't talk to the millions and millions and millions of other cars out there that don't have Car2X. Ultimately, this new Golf is a really interesting car. Okay, in a lot of ways, they've played things really safe by using the same platform and the same basic recipe, but they've also been really bold by introducing so many new technologies. Sure, they haven't got everything right. This infotainment system takes a hell of a long time to get used to, and I do wonder how many golf owners will end up being really frustrated by it. Can we please just have a knob? But on the whole, I'm really glad they've done what they've done. This is the 45th anniversary of the Golf. They had to do something big. They had to make a statement. And in this car, they've done exactly that. The previous Golf was such a great little car. For years, it's been the benchmark for the hatchback category. But over the years, others have begun to catch up and in some respects have even begun to overtake. But with this new Golf, VW is throwing down the gauntlet. The latest evolution is a massively ambitious car that now sets new standards in the class. If there's another hatchback that's anywhere near as technologically ambitious as the new Golf, then I'm yet to see it. And if you're open to experiencing new technologies and new approaches, then there's every chance you'll love it. Of course, there will be those who struggle to embrace this bold new outlook, people who would have preferred a volume knob for starters. But you could argue that if there's no struggle, there's no progress. And despite there being some hurdles to overcome for the Luddites amongst us, the new Golf is, clearly, a giant step forward for the class.